Ladies and gentlemen, on this special evening, we also take this opportunity to salute a disciplined and skilled person, an inspiration, Sri Rabindranath Bhartakur, who has encouraged stewardship in environmental conservation and community development through Balipara Foundation. Something that made him a legend in the eyes of many was his belief in giving back to the society. In fact, he had dedicated his entire life to marvel in the lap of nature and always encouraged his friends and family to appreciate and unwind in the natural habitat. On this special evening, it would only be right to honor Sri Rabindranath Bhartakur and his principles, which inspired the people and also laid the stone for the foundation of the Balipara Foundation at his residence in Guwahati in the year 2007. We give tribute to Mrs. Meena Bhartakur and her family who are in the audience with us tonight and who have continued to strive to institutionalize his dreams. For his short lecture, please welcome on stage now our esteemed guest of honor, Dr. Kamaljit Singh Bawa. <laughs> Dr. Bawa is an evolutionary ecologist, conservation biologist, and a distinguished professor of biology at the University of Massachusetts in Boston. In 2012, Dr. Bawa received the first Gunera Sustainability Award, the world's major international award for work on sustainability. He's an elected member of the American Academy of Arts and Sciences. Dr. Bauer is also a recipient of the highest awards from the two main professional societies in his field. In 2003, the Association for Tropical Biology and Conservation bestowed on him its highest honor by electing him as an honorary fellow. The Society for Conservation Biology also awarded him its Distinguished Service Award in 2009, and he received the PN Mera Memorial Award in Botany in 2007. Dr. Bauer, the stage is yours. Good evening. What a wonderful two days. I'm really inspired by all who came to this stage and those who will come later this evening. And congratulations to all for their contributions to conservation of natural heritage, especially in the Northeast. I'm also inspired by the life and work of Mr. Rabindranath Bhartakur. And it is an honor to speak in his memory. And I'm really not only honored, but Ranjit very much humbled. I think during the last two days, we have seen how individuals working together can make a difference. And I want to continue this theme of collaboration, of co-design, of co-implementation, and co-dissemination of outcomes, which is also emerging a major theme in sustainability science. So I want to continue with that spirit of hopefulness and positive attitudes towards the problems, enormous problems we encounter. I need not remind you that India has tremendous amount of biodiversity. Almost 8% of global biodiversity within our country. A very important center of origin of many crops which sustain billions of people around the world. You have heard many figures about the value of this biodiversity during the last two days. This is the latest figure. Comes from Madhu Verma, who is an environmental economist. 128 trillion Indian rupees. 
and on an annual basis, what is the size of our GDP? Almost the same amount. This is what the natural capital is giving us. And we don't even take it into account in following certain developmental pathways or the things we do every day in our lives. And what is happening to this natural capital? Sadly, sadly, India is among the countries that have a highest rate of land conversion, highest rate of decline in animal and plant populations, and among the countries with the highest footprint on Earth. These, these parameters have been quantified. So the question is, how much are we investing in this natural capital? I think it was during the last, it was two years ago when our friend Peter Raven was here. Ranjit Barthakur and I and a few other colleagues got together immediately after the annual event and we announced a program on Northeast India biodiversity. It was just, we outlined the contours of a program, and we thought we will seek funding for this initiative. And we thought it will take us about, you know, maybe three, five years to marshal adequate resources. But it was only six months later, almost a year and a half ago, I was invited by the Government of India Department of Biotechnology to steer an initiative on Northeast India's biodiversity. In the process, we brought together 11 institutions, 30 investigators. The program at 23 crores for three years was funded about six months ago. And Balipara Foundation is a critical partner in that endeavor, this is a seed funding. We, need, we are going to enlarge the program, expand the program, and many of you, almost all of you, who are working in the area of conservation will be involved in this program. This program has four components, a very systematic survey of biodiversity in Northeast, the economic value of the ecosystem services and biodiversity the Northeast ecosystems provide, sustainable use of biodiversity, and capacity building and engaging civil society and sit developing citizen science are other important components of this program. There are 11 regional institutions involved in this program. It is going to be operated and run by local institutions in the Northeast. We hope our international partners and other national partners will come and join us in this endeavor. We recently had a workshop. There were 100 research associates participated in the workshop. They, that, that, number of people. I mean, that's not the full list of people or complete number of people who are working on this project. So it's going to be a huge endeavor. And I will, ask, uh, I will explain a little bit more about this thing. But then, with some colleagues in Bangalore, I developed a concept note for a national mission on biodiversity. This was about six months ago. On October 9, 
by the newly appointed Prime Minister's Council on Science, Information, uh, Science, Technology, and Innovation. It's a mouthful. I was invited to make a presentation on this national mission. And this national mission will involve a range of organizations in almost all parts of the country and will also allow us to strengthen the program in Northeast. At the meeting, this particular program, along with eight other programs, was approved in principle. We have been asked to write a proposal. We are seeking investments from the government of India of about 3,000 crores, or approximately $200 million over a 10-year period. And we will be submitting the proposal at the end of this month to the Prime Minister's Council. I don't know if you will be able to read uh, at the back uh, all these little boxes, but basically the program has six major, seven major components. But notice, each component, each component is linked to one particular aspect of human well-being. And furthermore, each of those component is linked to a particular set of sustainable development goals. So what we are trying to do is something very, very different, something I don't think has been done at a national level, at any other place, parts of it has been done, and I'll talk very briefly about this. So the major component, the first component is cataloging and mapping biodiversity, mapping life of India in great detail. Not, and that life includes cultures, traditions, ethnic groups, and so on and so forth. And then there are components related to biodiversity and ecosystem services, biodiversity and agriculture production, biodiversity and climate change, and disaster risk management, biodiversity and economy, and biodiversity and policies management and societal engagement. And the matic cataloging and mapping components is really the centerpiece of the program. We are going to use digital tools, artificial intelligence, available data, new data from the field in a manner it has not been done before. And hopefully, we will have very good information coming out that will form the basis of our action on the ground. That doesn't mean that we have to wait for action on the ground until we have all this information. I won't go over the key deliverables. I think I will end with this slide. I don't think there is any better way of honoring the memory of Mr. Ram Rabindranath Barthakur than providing this quote from Dr. Swaminathan. Even if we don't succeed, I think we will succeed in getting the resources. We have a group, we have a concept. We are going to work very hard to implement this concept. I'm reminded of my conversation with Ranjit two years ago when we were announcing this biodiversity initiative. And I said, Ranjit, this is very ambitious. I hope we succeed. Ranjit turned to me and said, I do not fail. What a, I, I can't think of anything better than that quote to honor the memory of his father. Thank you, Ranjit, for inspiration. 
thank you for bringing us together. And I think working together, there is really nothing, no challenge that is that we cannot meet. Thank you. Dr. Bawa, thank you for the most informative and thought-provoking lecture. Can we all please give him one more round of applause?